So TikTok is one of those apps where you could find a short span of videos to your liking. There's gaming, there's metal, there's tragedies. Wait, wait a minute, what? Tragedies? Yep, that's right. This app hasn't even been out for five years yet and there's already a lot of tragedies and lots of unfortunate shit that's gone on with these young creators. What's up everybody, I'm Amarx and today I'm gonna to describe the five sad tragedies that came from TikTok. Feel free to keep in mind that I am not listing these in any particular order. These are just the five stories I found that I would like to discuss to you guys that you guys should probably know. Number five, Isabella Guzman. Now this was a 18 year old girl who was on TikTok, but not recently a creator, but she did get famous for committing murder on TikTok many years after, which is really weird. But yeah, for some reason, these people were worshiping someone that's like a potential serial killer. Now the main reason why people on TikTok even worship this girl girl was because literally because she was pretty and what they did was they pretty much took videos of her in the courtroom while she was on trial for the convicted murder and yeah it was like what the hell like <laughs> why would you worship or simp for somebody that's literally going to kill somebody but anyways uh, we're going to get down to the story of this and how it all happened Isabella comes from a family that was considered kind of rel relatively poor, like they weren't really rich or anything, but they were trying to teach her the value and importance of money because obviously with a lot of teenagers, you try to fit in with your friends and stuff, but there's times where, especially with some families and other people that necessarily you can't always afford to get everything you get in life. But unfortunately with her, that Isabella was one of those spoiled teenagers, like not like with, you know, with like, you know, with stuff. Maybe she was spoiled, but she didn't understand the full understanding of what it's like to work for something. And what happened was when she was getting raised and everything that they offered her a job to work with a business and whatnot. But it's just there was something wrong with her because deep down there was always something odd about this particular girl. For a good majority role of her teenage life, uh, she did resent her parents a lot. And it also didn't help that she actually got her parents ended up getting divorced. And she had a new stepdad named Richard that she had to live with because that was the mom's boyfriend. And obviously they just made things worse for her. Her mom's name, by the way, was Young Ming Kong. I'm sorry guys, I got the names mixed up because wrong researching shit. So Young Mi Hoi was actually the mother's name, I'm sorry about that. Now Isabella did not like the situation so well with her mom and her new stepdad Richard that literally she would, for no reason, I guess she was so upset about the whole situation that she would send death threats to her mom via email and her mom received those emails and obviously police were called. And thankfully at the time, uh, nothing happened yet. Uh, Isabella was very nice and she complied with the officers that right then and there. They let her off with the warning because obviously she was pretty young. And they said that like, don't ever do it again. And she kind of somewhat promised that, but didn't really, you know, keep a promise later on. But yeah, and then that's, and then right after, right after that, uh, yeah, things that kind of took a darker turn, like literally the next day. I don't know about you guys, but if, if that were me as a parent, <laughs> yeah, that'd be like a warning sign that you should probably go to have your kid go to like some type of hospital or get them checked up somewhere because something ain't right. But anyways, what happened the next day was that uh, Isabella finds her mom again. She takes her mom, drags her to the bathroom. And all of a sudden, she's hearing these cries for help from her stepdad, Richard, and trying to come to the rescue. But she closes the bathroom door, and then apparently uh, Isabella starts taking, had a knife in her hand and starts, I guess, murdering her mother. And she was screaming, crying for help, and her last words were, help me, Richard. And it's kind of a scary, traumatic situation, especially if you're on the stepdad situation because you're trying to open the door and you're confused not knowing what's going on. So then, of course, he calls the authorities again and then uh, all of a sudden the door opens finally and, he, and she sees her covered up in blood, all messed up, probably smiling, happy that her mom's dead. And what happens was obviously Richard was devastated, shocked, and confused thinking that he's going to be next. But nope, she was satisfied. So he called authorities. She runs off. Uh, she drives off somewhere. She didn't have time to wipe up or clean up or anything. And yeah, and authorities kind of went on a search for her of where Isabella was. Now, Isabella was in fact indeed found in a car all bloodied up. They, I guess there was another dead body that she was hiding in a car that she also killed. And they also found out that she was still in the car. So they ended up finding her. And they arrest her, they put her into investigation. And here's where the TikTok thing comes into play, like I said earlier. Like there's a video of her actually in court, kind of acting a little crazy, but also trying to look innocent, kind of to manipulate the judge a little bit. And in the tech talk I'm about to show you, that you'll see that people, for some reason, that this happened like, what, eight years after the incident, because she's like now 25, that uh, all of a sudden people are worshiping her as a fandom because she looks pretty, like 
come on guys like there's way bigger bigger matters than that but anyways here's the clip of people of fandom on what people would do with tiktok that a majority of these tiktokers like they're worshiping this girl are probably dumb teenagers who probably worship anything because a lot of teenagers on tiktok are fucking cringy and you guys need to chill the hell out like stop simping over some psychopath like come on guys if you want to simp at least simp for someone that's a little like you know raised on weird internet culture not someone who's gonna fucking kill you like <laughs> i just can't i just don't get it now she is 25 years old she's been released from a mental hospital i'm assuming that she got help while she was charging in custody and stuff and what's good is it sounds like in the newest recent video i'm about to show you that it sounds like she literally wants to change as a person i think she does is, is under obviously house arrest because obviously what she did was really messed up and this type of second chance never happens anywhere. I'm just going to assume that she did go to prison for a couple years. But yeah, there's not very much information on the story of what she was charged and how long she spent in prison if she did go. Let's hopefully, uh, she, uh, it sounds like she just got help, but because she was diagnosed with schizophrenia, which is pretty a serious mental health issue. And stuff like this, like if there's an actual mental health problem, they will actually send you out to get help if it's a legit concern. And this girl obviously had it. I was not myself when I did that. And I have since been restored to full health. I was abused at home by my family for many years. My parents are Jehovah's Witnesses. And um, I left the religion when I was 14. And the abuse at home worsened after I quit. The fight with my mom was terrible. And um, I was injured in the process. I have the scars on my hands. Um, I don't know if you can see or not. I'm not mentally ill anymore. I'm not a danger to myself or others. If I could change it or if I could take it back, I would. Hopefully no one's sipping anymore in 2021, but you never know when it comes to fucking TikTok. So anyways, we're gonna go to number four. Okay, number four is not gonna be as long, but his name was Gabriel Salazar. And what pretty much happened was he was in a car chase, right? He was a TikTok star. He was only, I think, 19 years old. He only had 1.8 million, 1 million followers, about to hit 2 million. What happened was he was in a car chase uh, in a police pursuit and he was carrying illegal immigrants in him in the car. We don't know how it involved the whole police chase even happened, but what happened was he pretty much died during a car crash during the chase, which suffered his fate. Now the other two drivers or passengers, we don't really know what exactly happened to him, if they survived or not. But anyways, uh, he was known for lip syncing, making comedy sketches, and doing most of the ordinary stuff on TikTok. And yeah, it was a pretty sad and tragic event, I guess. And it's not very much information on this particular person, but this is exactly what happened to him. What I do know is before this, he was re well respected around the social networking community, especially YouTube and stuff like that, where his fans obviously uh, found the news and they spread the news around trying to mourn his death. He was just a well-respected creator for TikTok, I suppose. For me, I don't use TikTok that often, so I don't really know exactly what most of these creators are in terms of like, you know, getting familiar with the, you know, the community. But uh, yeah, he was well-respected before this. And this was actually pretty recent. This happened of October 1st of 2021, so the beginning of last month as the time of this recording. Even a big creator on YouTube named FaZe Ra goes on his Instagram and gives him his, his respect, and it says that... Uh, I wish it wasn't true. Rest in peace, man. And this was just one of the many stories that's happened with these TikTok tragedies. Unfortunately, this is one of the shorter ones. Okay, now with number three, this one's gonna make you be like, uh, this one's kind of dumb. This was a pretty big one, but it's like, what the hell? So anyways, his name was uh, Zachary Lathram. He was an 18 year old TikToker who pretty much uh, wanted clout by <laughs> going to his neighbor's house. And he pretty much murdered him just for clout, which is really fucking stupid. Some people, I guess, just have some bad beef with their neighbors. Like, don't get me wrong, there are some neighbors that are just complete douches. But this one had no reason to go as far as it did. It was just completely, completely dumb. But anyways, uh, what happened with this kid was, this all started when he was 16 years old. He moved in to his grandparents' house, I suppose. 
his parents either kicked him out or they died. But I'm a, I assume that they kicked him out because this happened in New Jersey. He was living with his grandparents and not too long after he moved in, he already had some beef with the neighbors because of his reckless driving, which is pretty understandable. And there's a lot of teenagers that think they're invincible when they're driving, which shouldn't be a thing. But yes, in my opinion, honestly, I think 16 is a little slightly too young in the United States um, to drive just because it makes no sense that someone can drive a vehicle that young but you can't even drink beer until you're 21 which is like not saying you should drink at 16 but it's like makes no damn sense if you think about it. heavy machinery can't drink beer till you're 21 and then the consistency of uh, you know uh, being 18 to go out in the marines and get shot but anyways yeah yeah he was also a part of the marines now, his grandfather obviously tried to step in telling him, hey, you should apologize. And he made him apologize, and he actually did. But obviously, the kid had some early signs of being a sociopath or something because he did. But then he literally, right in a couple hours after, did what he wanted to do and recklessly drove right behind the dude's back already. And obviously, showing that he doesn't care. And what makes things even more messed up is that this dude, obviously, uh, not only that he was in the Marines and everything, that he was also supposed to be taught to show respect for other people and authority, but obviously he wasn't doing it, and he was a big narcissist. So the neighbor's names are called the Mr. and Mrs. Lanthems. That's just their last name. You know, the usual casual, you know, authority, parent household name or neighbor. Mr. Just to show respect because this kid's really young. And these guys were in their middle age mid 50s or early 50s so anyways what happens is that uh he was obviously causing more and more trouble this was put up for a while like a couple years actually and now when he was 16 up to 18 years old and what happened was that when he was driving that there was many times that the wife would come out and kind of try to confront him and then he would pull out his phone and start remaking TikToks, kind of mocking the situation, calling her Karen and everything, which I'll probably will show you in the video real quick. And it's really ridiculous because it's like, yes, she's getting a react, you're getting a nice reaction for TikTok because there's a TikToks run by a bunch of teenagers. But it's just like, <laughs> all you had to do is just not recklessly drive that caused the whole situation. Everything would be under control. It's not like you're like somewhat, the neighbor was actually being a dickhead and coming out to you and like, you know, trying to get on your property and just try to threaten to hurt you over some bullshit. But no, he was just causing trouble just because just he can. What are you going to do, Karen? You okay, Karen? So finally, after two years, for some reason, the husband didn't even confront the kid at all for two years. He finally had enough because he was going down a road. Uh, he was purposely driving recklessly again, and he sees his neighbor's 17-year-old kid riding a bike, and he strays up, tries to swerve into him on purpose, pretty much trying to hurt the dude and murder him on the spot with this car. And that's when he had enough and you go to confront the kid, which is kind of messed up and understandable because why would you even try to hit someone on purpose unless you are some serial killer, psychopath, sociopath, who knows? Like, there's got to be something really mentally messed up about you to really want to do something like that just for fun. I can tell during this whole situation that he wanted to live a nice and wealthy and rich lifestyle and everything. So he's trying to get, do that by getting clout through TikTok. But what really makes things really, really odd is that this dude's not only 18, but he had a girlfriend slash wife when he was around that time. It's like married at 18 years old. So the weird situation was not only that he was 18 with a wife that was married, but he wasn't able to move out yet. So him and his wife were living in the grandparents' house. And you're just like, if you're fucking married and think you're all adult and shit, why don't you move out and contribute so you don't have to deal with these neighbors and act like a fucking a grown up, like not some teenager with a label of an adult on it like come on dude yeah even though he was barely 18 18 is way too young in my opinion to get married unless you're some super mature 18 year old woman or guy and you really want this and stuff like that and you don't mind people getting involved with the government and everything and you're willing to make that sacrifice and sure but <laughs> 18 and married it's just so oh, i mean that, that stuff like that don't not at least now in 2021 don't last very long Sorry I got a little off track, but yeah, the, the neighbor, Mr. Lance, Han Lance him, uh, comes after Zach and he confronts him and, he, and he's not having it, dude. So he decides to go get two knives and a stun gun from his house, go over to the neighbor's house and assault the, son the stun gun and then try to assault his wife and also assault him. And what happens is that he assaults the son with the stun gun, kind of assaults him, then leaves thinking, oh, it's all done. But then the, Mr. Lansham comes out and follows him in the back of his garage. 
And I'll, for some reason, don't know why, but the wife happened to be recording the whole incident because I think she supports his reckless and douchebaggery behavior. And yeah, and he ends up successfully uh, stabbing him pretty much in the lung area, pinching his lung, and he ends up dying. And of course, uh, I'm not sure if he attended the kill, but it wouldn't surprise me if that was his instincts just for TikTok clout. I'm really guilty of doing stuff for a little bit of clout, not like, you know, not super bad, but you know, I've done trends, a little bit of trendy topics or just a little bit to grow the channel, but I would never kill somebody, that's just not me. But yeah, the dude actually got sentenced for an investigation by police in New Jersey. They go investigate him and for some odd reason, it took him a couple months, he was not charged guilty for killing him, which is like a big what the hell. Like what? He actually was released and was allowed to relocate to Florida with some restrictions. Now during the investigation, he was originally charged for manslaughter, but now he only now that got upheld, but now he has charges still of agitated assault and then some weapon offenses, which in my opinion is not enough, dude. Man, these damn criminal justice court systems been really nice to these TikTokers. <laughs> Now, number two isn't the longest one either, but there was an incident on TikTok where there was a lady that was terrorizing not only TikTok and Omigo, going around terrorizing kittens and murdering them and showing them skulls and stuff on live streams on Omigo and TikTok. Unfortunately, there wasn't much warning signs or accounts that they could find immediately until after the incidents on Omegle. Now, there was an account on TikTok that was kind of warning people about what she was about to do next through the text-to-speech option and everything called the crazy cat lady underscore first. And yeah, it, it, it was there's more than one account, but the second account mainly was the more, more active one. And obviously, people were trying to search for her and stuff, but she kept appearing in many different locations because she obviously has some type of VPN or something going on. It is kind of messed up that she was terrorizing the whole internet. And fun, unfortunately, there is no new information that was found about this crazy cat lady girl. We don't even know her name or nothing. But it is a cr really interesting tragedy because it, it is pretty much killing all the cats. And it is terminating her account at least. But it's really messed up because why would anyone torture animals for someone's pleasure or entertainment? So, yeah, to this day, people are still finding the search for her, or at least I hope so, because I don't want people giving up on some fucked up shit like this. Okay, so the last one, too, is a big what to F, and it's a pretty messed up one, too. Her name was Claire Miller, and this girl was actually accused of murdering her sister while she was in her sleep. Now, of course, she had a TikTok of 21,000 followers. She would just post TikToks of her lip syncing and then dancing in the worst way possible. And she was very young, too. She was only 14, so she was doing stuff a lot of 14-year-olds would find rather entertaining than get later get older and find that extremely cringy, <laughs> at least to me. But, yeah, it was pretty. it's a pretty insane situation because this girl that she did get accused of was, in fact, older. What makes this even more messed up is that not only that she murdered her sister in her sleep with a disability, that she actually was suffering from cerebral palsy where she couldn't actually properly walk and she was in a wheelchair. And obviously this girl had some mental issues as she was showing signs apparently of homicide and suicidal thoughts a month before this happened. Unfortunately, no one really spoke out to her. I'm not sure if she did give out any warning signs to her parents or friends or family, but it should be a concern if some of these signs were showing. Now, there's a very good chance that this girl wasn't getting as much attention as the other girl because of her condition, her older sister's condition. And therefore, it might resent her to being jealous and her mental health and her stability doesn't come, that combination could be very dangerous. So the older sister's name was named Helen Miller, and what happened was she was found pretty much with her body all bloodied up with a pillow covering her face. And pretty much were suspecting her younger sister because they also found her outside trying to wash her hands in the snow, trying to hide the evidence of her bloody hands. And the police officer and everyone investigating her actually asked her, and she confessed that uh, she did stab her sister many times. For, for what reason? We're not fully sure. Now, after the news spread around with her murdering her sister, that her TikTok account did gain a bit of followers after that for a short period of time of 32,000 extra followers. And for some reason, people are interested in people who do some messed up stuff or they become a hero or whatever. Yeah, for some reason, people love that stuff. So they found her account and pretty much followed the shit out of her. And yeah, not too long after that, though, TikTok took things in their hands and quickly removed the account. Now, she did was sentenced and charged for murder, pretty much, and she was tried as an adult, 
but it didn't take very long after until a month later, unfortunately, just uh, they decided to let hell, held the charges and plead her not guilty and pretty much take her, uh, you know, to go get her help with mental health, which is kind of already too late considering that you already took someone else's fucking life, especially your siblings. Man, these justice systems, they're really messed up. Like, it makes you really question, like, these justice systems, man, like, if they're that nice, dude, maybe I should go out and do something like this, but no, <laughs> I don't have the balls to, but... Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Like, this is stupid. Alrighty, guys, that concludes the five TikTok tragedies that makes you question humanity. Hey, that rhymed. That might be the title of this video. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. And yeah, if you like this type of list style videos, this is very different for me. But I kind of like it because it's still into my niche and everything. Yeah, if you guys are interested, uh, make sure to leave some comments down below if you got any more suggestions about this. If you happen to be new to the channel and you like my content, make sure to leave a like if you really enjoy it. Make sure to subscribe because there will be more stuff coming out and we are growing pretty good and everything. We're almost there to 6,000 pretty soon. We're almost halfway there to 6,000. I'd love to get 10,000 really soon, but we're growing pretty well, and I'm pretty happy we're at this pace we're going. So, yeah, we're at 6,000 almost. And what's also really interesting about TikTok, by the way, is that a lesson learned. Don't fucking use it for anything else but maybe to promote your YouTube or something because it seems like it's gotten really toxic, even though there are some good parts of TikTok that could be very good. Also, unfortunately, I do got a new phone. It's not really unfortunate, but like I could use TikTok a lot more because I do sometimes use it to promote my stuff. Maybe I could make something funny out of it that's not a stupid cringy cancer dance. But yeah, <laughs> let's see what happens in the future. Okay, everybody, I'll see you guys in the next video. So, peace out.